May we have the hurting group in the ring, please. And of course, this these breeds were all meant to work really closely with man and 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 they still want to be close to their families. They're, yes. They and they're very trainable. And this is the, this is the group, the herding group that has. You know, we talk about the terrier group with the most best in show wins. They have the fewest of the seven groups. But it was just a couple of years ago when rumor uh, was uh, victorious for best in show. Right. But a lot of these breeds, the, many of these breeds, were in the working group, right. and then the working group became so large that it was uh, broken up, and the herding dogs started their own group. Right. So this group doesn't have as long a history here as the other groups do. They got to catch up a bit. That's right. When you look at these dogs and their function, you think herding, but there's actually a couple of different types of jobs. You know, there's some that are actually herding, corralling the, the livestock, and others that are drovers. They they push the, the livestock. Absolutely. And then, of course, the other thing to consider is the coat. The coat is usually based on what terrain they were in and what temperature, what mm -hmm. climate. What climate. Mm -hmm. Our judge tonight, Peggy Beisel McElwain. Yep. We talked to her about switching to the herding dogs this year. Previously, she judged terriers here. Peggy judged that terrier group, as you mentioned, and that year, the terrier, the bull terrier, That's Rufus, went best in show. So <laughs> maybe the herding dog will have the same magic from her. We have 31 dogs in this group, and here's Michael. Originally bred to herd cattle in the rugged Australian outback, the Australian cattle dog is tough, courageous, intelligent, and possesses great stamina. Their loyalty, devotion to duty, and protective instincts make them self-appointed guardians of family and property. Adult coats are flat-lying, weather-resistant, and can either be red or blue. This is Australian Cattle Dog, number 11. So Wyatt is retiring today after winning the breed, which is a nice way to, to end your career, winning Absolutely. best of breed at Westminster. Of course, he's also very active in other sports, which many of these dogs are whether it's canine good citizen or herding titles. There are lots of different ways to keep your dog stimulated and keep them active, even if they're not going to be showing anymore. I know his owner, Laura Yeomans, from back in Golden Retrievers, which was my family's original breed, but not unusual for people to move from one breed to another. The Australian Shepherd was actually developed in the Western United States, where this versatile and intelligent breed has been valued by ranchers for decades as an exceptional herder. An eminently trainable dog, their athleticism and skill led them to succeed in a wide range of endeavors, from search and rescue to obedience, agility, and fly ball events. This is Australian Shepherd, number 17. Healthy looking dog. This dog's name is Trump. Now, before you tweet, <laughs> named after the Trump card in the game Bridge. All right, Don, hold off there. Okay, just want to make nice sure. save. Right, yes, yes, we segue <laughs> to uh, a popularity in the Western culture with horse riding here after World War, II, uh, World War II and rodeos often seen on TV. This is a great all purpose dog. They can do so many different things, they're great in agility course hurting but uh, there right are many around. other things that they, that this breed can do because of their versatility oh. <laughs> this is Trump as you said <laughs> Trump's happy to be here <laughs> the bearded collie or beardy is an old Scottish breed that achieved recognition in the United States in 1977 is happy to work sheep play with children, jump through hoops, or do anything with their people. Beardies are independent thinkers, so early fun and imaginative training is the key. Bite, this is Bearded Collie, number 19. Good. Of course, this is my original Good. breed that Straight I grew up bed. showing. My parents bred. Love watching the Beardy. And this particular Beardy, Matrice has so many other titles, I can't even read them off. <laughs> <laughs> There's way too much. This dog's also an FCI international champion, Puerto Rican champion, Pan American, Canadian. This dog gets around. Some frequent flyer miles. <laughs> <laughs> Beardies are such a fun loving breed. Of course, they have that oh, double good. coat. Thank you, right around. Handle please. the Scottish Highlands. But of course, they need training. Like any dog, you need to start early socializing and training them. The Beauceron is an old and distinct French breed, bred and selected for their aptitude to herd and guard large flocks of sheep. 
The ideal Beauceron is a well-balanced, solid dog of good height and well-muscled without heaviness or coarseness. A formidable dog, he commands respect wherever he goes. This is Beauceron, number 11. This is Maytree. Sorry about that, though. We actually had some information mixed up there. The Beauceron is the dog from all of the different countries. Oh, there we go. There's a lot of dogs, and we're trying to sort through them carefully. But. Of course, the beardy was Wildwood Kinky, a Hear Me Roar, so shown by Lisa Betta. Sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, because Rory is nine years old, and here, the Beauceron, this is Matrice. This breed works up close to its Good. livestock, you. Right so around. you see that more compact, upright structure would uh, accentuate his ability to work in that way. The Belgian Malinois is one of three similar Belgian herding dogs recognized in this country. The Malinois is distinguished from the other Belgians by its short coat, ranging in color from fawn to mahogany. A proud, agile, strong dog, full of life, it excels at police work, search and rescue, and performance competition. This is Belgian Malinois, number 22. You know, uh, Don, we saw that tail going back and forth uh, yeah. previously in the shot. Uh, well, I always took that as the, the dog is happy. Dog so, is happy. So here a little more focus, maybe. Oh, there you go. Starting yeah. We always love to see that. You Smile. Know, the dog, the dog's tail wagging is a great sign, and you see that a lot here. Now, of course, these are show dogs, but Malinois is used Thank often with right police work, different guard work, and actually even Brian Lilly, our director, has a Malinois at home. And he's, he's got a big estate in Texas in it, Roma, Roma Wild. He's got all that land. <laughs> the Belgian Sheepdog with its distinctive long black coat was originally bred as a versatile working farm and family dog, herding the flock and guarding the home. Today they are active and successful in many events, such as herding, obedience, tracking, and agility trials. This is Belgian Sheepdog, number 14. Good. So Duke, and when you see number one Good. male Straight Belgian back, sheepdog, please. right? So there's analytics, there's shows you appear, and how do, how do you get that ranking? It's typically by the number of dogs that you've defeated. Most of the ranking systems are based on that. So and not number of dog shows, but the dogs you've gone up against in each show. Yes. That's correct. And so as you see, is the number one male. That means the number one female is out there. Yes. And uh, don't get them mixed up. <laughs> do they want to <laughs> hang out? I mean, uh, just think what a dynamic couple they make. Thank you. And right around. Belgian sheepdog used in World War I as message, message carriers, excuse me, also ambulance dogs, and even help pull heavy equipment. They usually have that, it's, sometimes there's some white on the chest, right? A little bit of white yeah. on the solid black. Just a little bit. The Belgian Trevurn is the third of the Belgian breeds with a long-haired coat color other than black. Bred to herd as well as guard, these dogs excel at search and rescue dogs and in all other areas of competition. The breed's versatility and graceful eye-catching appearance are prized by their owners. This is Belgian Trevurn, number eight. This is Jagger. I met him backstage with uh, Josh Groban, Straight who stopped by place. earlier. Oh, nice. He got to meet Jagger. Imported from France. He does not speak French, <laughs> I asked already. <laughs> These, these Belgian breeds are very similar. The Malinois, the Sheepdog, and the Devere are very similar construction and shape. It's, it's really the coats that's making the difference. And that black tipping on the fawn color is, is a breed characteristic. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right around. Cool look. Many turfs have titles on both ends of their name. They're very versatile and very good at other dog sports. The Bergamasco is an ancient alpine herding and guarding breed. This medium to large, muscular, and heavy bone dog has an abundant of coat that forms flocks, allowing them to blend in with the sheep and provide insulation from the climate and protection from predators. Bergamasco are intelligent, loyal, eager to please, making them wonderful family companions. This is Bergamasco, number 10. Good, thank you. Straight down and back. 
Now, Don, would you describe that as a, what, a dog hair, goat hair, kind of a wool combination of a, of a coat? Yeah, it's basically you've got multiple textures that are intertwining and causing those cords. Cord white flocks. looks, okay. Yes. Of course, that's to protect the dog. Yes. Whether from an attack of a predator or from the elements. You know, going back to functionality, this dog's working in the mountainous region, the Alps, you know, herding sheep. That right the heavier bodied, heavier bone than, say, when we looked at the Belgian breeds, right? A little bit lighter build. The Berger Picard is thought to be the oldest of the French herding breeds. The Berger Picard is a medium-sized dog with a rustic, tousled appearance, naturally erect ears, and maybe fawn or brindle in coloration. People-oriented and loyal, the Berger Picard it makes a good family pet if properly socialized. This is Berger Picard, number 18. Of course, they have that rough, weatherproof coat. You can see it looks Looks a rugged, rustic kind of look. And that light-footed, easy way of going. They should be able to um, you know, do that movement all day long while they're working the field with their livestock. That's right. Most of the herding breeds are supposed to have a very... Good, thank you. Uh, right around? Their gait. They should barely be peeding, taking their foot off the ground. It should look like they're floating across the ground effortlessly. Back in... Last year, 2018, best of the herding group title went to Slick, border collie from Pennsylvania. We mentioned back then Slick had the best 31 other dogs to be in the show ring in this border collie carrying the herding group title. After rumor won best in show the year before in 2017, the German Shepherd, but Slick is back for another run. A product of Scotland and England, the Border Collie is the premier herding dog. Their ability to manipulate sheep is legendary, as is their prowess in obedience and agility. Although easily trained, they are so highly motivated to work that they are perfect for the farm, but not apartment dwelling unless provided with plenty of outside activity. This is Border Collie, number 14. So, of course, Slick won the group last year, but also important, he's the winningest border collar in history. Wow. And that's something that, you know, who doesn't want that title? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Jamie includes handling. No, I heard, didn't Jamie just have knee surgery? That's true, but of course, nothing would keep him away from this. You may see him moving a little slower, but the dog looks great. <laughs> well, the adrenaline will kick in, yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And, you know, Slick has been out. Uh, he's done a lot of winning. Maybe this will be his last show. Yeah. The Bouvier de Flandre was developed in the 19th century as a farm dog in the northern hills of France and Belgium. He has been known throughout history as the milk cart dog. His strength and agility, coupled with his intelligence and supreme disposition, make him a strong worker and a fine companion. This is Bouvier de Flandre, number seven. And would you show me his bite, please? Good. Straight down and back. Lane Paquette showing Bobby Lars, baby Lars. Yeah, Quiche Bouvier is Elaine's very well known. That's right. Another massive master breeder. Master. Yeah. Exactly. Now, our owner, the owners tell us that, that baby Lars likes to give high fives. That would be like a <laughs> like a high 20 of that <laughs> jump at a baby. If, yeah. oh, we almost saw the move there. You make a good point, that high 20, because that's a lot of dog <laughs> under that hair. Exactly. Big and body, Elaine, heavy sorry. bone. Elaine's not a big woman, you know, so you got to train these yes. dogs early, make sure that they're, they know who's in charge. The Briard is an ancient breed of France, serving as a sheep herder, guardian, and all-around farm dog. Vigorous, alert, and self-confident, they have the strength and power to do the job for which they are bred. Distinguishing characteristics include a long wavy coat, dew claws on his rear legs, and a crook at the end of the tail. This is Briard, number 14. Great, straight down the back. And uh, Gibbs is named after the uh, TV character Leroy Jethro Gibbs from <laughs> NCIS. <laughs> Another French herding breed, actually related to the Beauceron we saw earlier. Um, you'll find that a lot in breed histories, where there's connections from one breed to another. That's right, and they're both a big, solid dog. Yes. Briards kind Thank of right regard around. children as part of their flock, protective um, family dog. That's right. Got to watch out. They'll keep them all together. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing, absolutely. 
Named for the ancient land of Canaan, its origin dating back to biblical times, the Canaan dog is Israel's only native dog. A herding and sentry dog for the ancient Hebrews, the breed lived as a feral dog for over 2,000 years in the desert, where it survived independently until it was re-domesticated in 1935. This is Canaan Dog, number six. Not too fast. Like most of the herding breeds, or I should all the herding breeds, these dogs need to be able to work all day long. So having that effortless gait that doesn't require a lot of energy is really important. So you get that moderate construction. If you look yeah. at the, uh, the angles on the shoulders and the hindquarters, very moderate angles makes for a, a very steady, efficient gait. Right here. Watch it. Watch. That head and ear, right tail, breed characteristics. You heard the handler making the sounds, the judge you know, wants to see the ears up, see the expression of the dog. So that's the reason for that, the squeaky sound. In Welsh, corgi means dwarf dog. <laughs> the cardigan is the corgi with the tail and is one of the oldest breeds in the British Isles, dating to 1200 BC. He was developed as an all-purpose farm worker and companion. His willingness and trainability allows him to excel in performance events. This is Cardigan Welsh Corgi, number 15. Great. Straight down and back. When they talk about the, this being the Corgi with, with the tail, there are actually a lot more differences between the two breeds. The heads the are different. Heads are different. are different. There's ear a shape. Lot These different. are rounder yes. ears where the Pembroke is more pointy. Well, you see heavier bone. And was the, 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 the elongated shape, like uh, purpose to nip at cattle's heels or drive cattle kind yes. of stay low, low to, to the, the ground. ground? Yeah, low to the ground. Keep them safe. Good, thank you, right around. Very clever, smart breed. They're very smart. There were so, a few of them in agility championship on oh, wow. Saturday. Collies originated in Scotland where they are bred to gather, move, and protect sheep. They were selected for herding because they are gentle, alert, and intelligent. The breed comes in two varieties, the rough coat and the smooth coat. One standard is used for both varieties. This is Rough Collie, number 28. Collie, you think? And would you show me her bite, please? America's favorite lassie. Great, in the 50s. straight down and back. Not and uh, extremely intelligent. Uh, President Benjamin Harrison owned a collie named Dash. This is Marilyn, shown by Brian Livingston, who has uh, done a lot of winning. She's the number one Rough Collie in the country. Beautiful head, and that's really important, this breed. It's that, that kind of wedge-shaped, blunt, all of a Thank piece. Thank you, and right around. And see how the ears, just the tips fold over? It's beautiful, beautiful headpiece. This is a blue merle, of course. And now for the second variety of collies, the smooth. While the rough-coated variety was developed for the colder northern climes of Scotland, the smooth collie was used primarily as a cattle driver in the south of England. This is Smooth Collie, number 24. This is Harrison. Of course, again, you can, it's like the Rough Collie, but smooth It's the coated. same standard. Same standard, yeah. so the head piece. And why do they separate? Why not leave them grouped together? A lot of breeds have varieties, um, like Dachshunds, right? You have long hair, wire hair, smooth. Same thing here, just a difference in coat, but, but all the same requirements as far as head and structure. Part of it would be location, where they're working, and type of whether they're doing right the around. actual herding or the drover. Well, the smooth collie needs companionship, does well in the country or the city. It's a beautiful moving dog. The Antley Booker Mountain Dog is the smallest of the four Swiss Senhun breeds. Originally from the Enlebuck Valley of Switzerland, the breed is prized as a herding and all-around utility dog. These distinct, smooth-coated, tricolor dogs are an intelligent, high-energy breed, best for people with an active lifestyle. Straight this is Enlebucker Mountain Dog, number eight. So Neo won his national specialty, and you hear us talk about a lot of these top dogs have, but that win is really special for a breeder because you're being judged generally by another breeder. Absolutely. And you're against the dogs from all around the country, and it, it's a special event. It's a huge event to win your national. That's where you showcase as a breeder. Exactly. This is the smallest of the, the Swiss breeds. You know, we're, gonna, we're gonna see um, some in the working group.
The finish lap hunt is a reindeer herding dog from the north of the Arctic Circle. Their double coat is waterproof and serves them well in the coldest climates. For years, they've been very popular in Scandinavia as a family pets. Also excel in obedience, agility, and the show ring. This is Finnish Lapun, number eight. Great, you're gonna go straight down the back, not too fast. Dusky's being handled by a junior handler who's competing this year in juniors at Westminster, right. which is something Don and I have done many moons many ago. Many moons ago. <laughs> Sierra Carlin, yeah, and, and obviously the experience, uh, nervous moments, anxious moments. Yeah, sure, I actually did the prelims today. I'll be doing them again tomorrow, and, and I'll, our juniors are so talented. They had to win all year to get here. They, there'll be, she's posed, she's fine, she's poised. She's not rattled being in the garden. The German Shepherd dog is a highly intelligent, exceptional family dog who enjoys the endeavors of its owners. Originally bred as a sheep herding and protection dog in Germany, it is competitive in herding, obedience, agility, tracking, and successful both as a service dog and a policeman's best friend and protector. This is German Shepherd right, dog, number 11. Always brings a cheer. The German Shepherd used his in search and rescue during the days following 9-11. This is Kent Boyles. You'll recognize him. He was Rumor's handler. And this is Tony, which is Rumor's half-brother. Kent is a breeder owner handler. And in, uh, he was AKC's breeder of the year this year with his partner, Liz. Bo uh, Liz. And, you know, we can't say enough, Liz Oster, excuse me. And we can't right say around. enough about the breeders in the sport. Yeah. It takes a lot of work and dedication to yep. get two dogs into the group of the Now garden. watch him go. This is this is the hallmark of this breed, that reconnaissance trot. At some point, all four feet are off the ground. Yeah. The Icelandic sheepdog arrived in Iceland in longboats with the first Viking settlers. A hardy and agile Nordic herding spits, it has a thick weatherproof coat. Confidence and lively bearing are typical for this gentle, intelligent, happy dog. Highly alert, it will give visitors an enthusiastic and cheerful welcome. This is Icelandic Sheepdog, number 11. Stacy Threffel showing Roy. Again, he's a top winning dog, won the breed at the AKC National Championship this year. Passed his uh, farm dog certified test. And uh, Iceland's. Great. Thank you. Right around. This breed, uh, the only native dog to Iceland, uh, and has appeared on the country's postage stamps. The miniature American Shepherd was developed in California during the 1960s. Hello. These dogs were bred for their small size, intelligence, trainability, and herding instinct. This active dog needs both exercise and training. Whether working stock, navigating an agility course, or doing therapy work, the miniature American Shepherd does it all with due diligence. This is miniature American Shepherd, number 28. This breed's very popular with those in the horse, in, with horses in the equestrian world. They're very smart, versatile. Of course, we have Clint Livingston showing Reno here, who is the number one mini uh, American in all systems. We sometimes have different ranking systems in the dog show world. Yeah. This is an American creation. These were bred down from the Australian Shepherds. We saw the Australian Shepherd earlier in the group. And uh, we have dogs represented from all 50 states in this competition and California providing the most, followed by the state of New York. The Norwegian Buhan was once a cherished companion of Vikings. Buhan means farm dog in Norwegian, and he is a versatile breed that herds livestock, guards property, and has been used for hunting game. He is a double-coated, squarely built, fits, fits type dog with an intelligent, friendly expression. This is Norwegian Buhan, number 11. Not too fast. You may recognize the handlers. This is Doug Belter, who was on the Beagle. Yes, and we hound just group. saw in the Hound group. And here he has Ragnar the number one Norwegian Buhan. Top winning male, history of the breed. That's always a special level. And yeah, right that shows reach. some consistency in his success, right? That he's been able to amass a number of dogs that he's defeated through the year to get that ranking.
The Old English Sheepdog emerged as a distinct breed in the mid-19th century, evolving from herding stock. Is known as the bobtail with a harsh double coat resistant to weather and brambles. He excelled as a drover handling cattle or sheep on the way to market. This is Old English Sheepdog, number 12. And let's see her bite, please. All right, straight down and back, nice and easy, not too fast. What a roar for uh, Elsa here at the garden. This breed familiar uh, pop culture classics, the Shaggy DA, the Brady family pet, uh, Archie Comics, and then Max in the Disney classic, The Little Mermaid. This is Elsa, who's been the number one dog in the country, shown by yeah. Heather. Heather Johnson and her family, of course, has been in sheepdogs, and her husband's family have been in sheepdogs. Um, many generations. She noticed when Peggy was going over, she really got her hands in there to, you know, examine the dog, feeling the broad own. head, big rib body, short back, heavy bone. Right, but you right got to get around. your hands in there to feel that as a judge. Absolutely, you have to feel that bear-like mm -hmm. shape. And Heather may start her out slow, so that there we go, and then she That's speeds up a little bit. Characteristic role for the breed. The more prevalent of the corgi breeds, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi was developed in Wales as a livestock and family dog and dates to at least the 10th century. The Pembroke is recognizable by their foxy face, sturdy build, and a moderately long, low shape. Physical agility and affectionate temperament are paramount characteristics of the Pembroke. This is Pembroke Welsh Corgi, number 17. Like a lot of herding breeds, this breed, if you don't give it a job, it'll come up with its own job. <laughs> so it's important to keep them busy. They'll herd anything. They'll definitely, they're referred to as healers. And if you've ever lived with one, you'll know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Cubby. It's a cool name. I like Cubby. Chris, who's the most famous Pembroke fan here in the right world? Around. I don't know. Should I know that? Uh, Queen Elizabeth. Queen oh, Elizabeth. Okay. Always got one around. <laughs> okay. I, I did not First know documented in the 13th century, the Polish Lowland Sheepdog is a herding dog of considerable ability. The double coat is long, dense, and shaggy. Being strong-willed, they do best with a master that is willing to train and socialize them. This is Polish Lowland Sheepdog, number 14. Great. You can go straight down the back, not too fast. You can notice some of the dogs go up on this platform, Chris, and the reason for that is so the judge doesn't have to bend over them as far. They're not small enough to be on the table, so they have the ramp, it's called, and the dogs uh, are elevated so the judge can examine them. And this is Vera, national Vera. specialty winner in 2018. Now, if you don't want to get that Thank Polish right lowland sheepdog mouthful out, you can just call them a pons. <laughs> okay. That's what we refer to them at the shows. Ryan Wolf's handling. The Puli is an ancient breed of Hungary introduced by the migration of the Magyars over a thousand years ago. He has the same corded coat as seen on the Commodore. Adept at handling large herds and flocks, the Puli is keenly intelligent and deeply devoted to its owners. This is Puli, number 10. This is another herding Side. breed with the coat that's obviously Good. made Straight to protect it. Too fast. The shepherds are known to say it's not a dog, it's a Puli. <laughs> There is a difference. There is. They're very <laughs> light-footed. Let's watch this. Yeah, watch them go. Let's watch them go. Yeah, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> light-footed breed. You know, they they would work with their with their owner for months at a time in in isolation. So they're very close to their owners and definitely want to work with them and be a little suspicious of others as they approach until the Thank owner you, says right it's on. okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Parker's ready. We finally have somebody speaking up here for the uh, Joe Carp on audio. I had to bring There's the that typical way there. of going. An ancient Hungarian herding breed, the Pumi, Hello, was developed by shepherds who developed a dog that would herd cattle, sheep, and pigs on small farms in western Hungary. This medium-sized spirited dog with wavy and curly hair is intelligent, willing to work, and a quick learner. The breed is characterized by its square outline, circular tail, semi-erect ears, and a whimsical expression. This is Pumi, number 15. So in the herding group, you will see a lot of square dogs. This is another one. They're either square or they're going to be rectangular in size. 
Pumi has such a cute face. I mean, everyone thinks it's a cute little cuddly, but they're a serious working dog. Absolutely. And again, the, the structure connects to the type of work they do, right? Look at this structure compared to the corgi we just saw. Two totally different jobs hurting. Good. Thank you. Right around. Always I need to work with cattle or pigs or sheep. Yeah. I loved that they used the word whimsical in describing this dog because <laughs> yeah, I think that captures it perfectly. Hungarian. But a tough herder. Yeah, Very absolutely. tough herder. The Pyrenean Shepherd hails from the Pyrenees Mounds of France. They were the traditional working companions of the larger dog, the Great Pyrenees, and were bred to herd sheep and other livestock. They come in two varieties, smooth-faced and rough-faced, referring to short or shaggy hair. These shepherds excel at agility events and also make wonderful family companions. This is Pyrenean Shepherd, number six. So the coat here, you notice, is a little unusual. This is the cadenettes, the felted cords, cords that are the French style, should we say. Is that color the way, right? It's That's kind very of a, typical. Yeah. Very typical, okay. Kind of a blend. <laughs> It's like it's breeders say that through the wind. The breeders tells you only need two of them to handle a flock of Thank a thousand right sheep. That wow. is incredible. Yeah, that is for the size. That's a working dog. The Shetland Sheepdog originated in the Shetland Islands, developing there and on the British mainland as a popular, affectionate companion and farm dog. His color may be sable, ranging from light golden brown to dark mahogany, black or blue merle. The Sheltie's intense desire to please his owner makes him an outstanding worker in obedience and agility trials. This is Shetland Sheepdog, number eight. Good, good, good. Straight down back, That's not too fast. It's a beautiful dog. Wait till you see him go down and back. Conrad, number one Sheltie right now. Checking the bite. And <laughs> Here we go. A smile from Conrad. Usually a proud favorite. Yep. Very spectacular way of moving. Isn't that mean? Almost gliding. They look like a miniature collie, but there are a lot of features that are different between the two breeds. Thank you. Right around. Yeah, Beautiful a, outline. Yeah. Smart, clever dogs. He's ready to go. He knows there what he to goes. do. There he goes. I know what to do. Look at that. Spanish water dog is a rustic, medium-sized, curly-coated, all-purpose farm dog used to herd sheep and goats and cattle. The breed is developed, devoted to its people and happiest when he is in that function to perform. Because of his intelligence, trainability, and athleticism, this breed excels in all dog sports. This is Spanish water dog, number seven. Now you're going to ask me, why does a herding dog have water in its name? That's the first question, but that's because they were multi-purpose. They were waterfowl retrievers. Yeah, they, they did both jobs. Excellent watchdogs by today's standards. The single coat, it's always curly, woolly texture. It's a breed that needs a lot of exercise. Be showing either natural or what those cords, as you've seen in Thank a few you. of the other right breeds. Around. When he saw the camera, he said, What is that? Something's <laughs> moving. <laughs> Alert. Yeah. It's okay. The Swedish Valhund is a very old Spitz type breed dating from the days of the Vikings. Small, powerful, and fearless, they have been kept for centuries as an all purpose farm dog for herding cattle rodent control and alerting the farmer to visitors. The double coat and characteristic harness markings are essential features of this breed. The tail may be long, stubbed, or bobbed. This is Swedish Velhun, number eight. This is Aria, and we expect her to behave. She has a CD, rally title, trick dog title. She does it all. Another Spitz type dog, we've seen that as a uh, recurring theme for many of our breeds. Thank you. Right around. Thank you. Michael had mentioned the, the Viking historical tie in with this particular breed. Our judge, Peggy Beisel McElwain, as she said, born and bred in Green Bay in the womb of Packer, a diehard Packer fan. That's true. <laughs> and her, uh, her grandfather was the very first, Andrew Turnbull, the very first president 
of the Green Bay Packers. Of course, the NFL's only publicly owned team. Current president is Mark Murphy, so she's. The Border Collie and the Bouvier, please. Oops, is making, wow. making the roster Border Collie. Slick is out. The Bouvier. Smooth Collie. Marilyn. Both Shepherd. Collies are in. Boone. Tony. Old Boone. English. Elsa, of course. Shelty. Got the, got the hurry up offense. Andrea. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she was clearly sorting in her mind as she was going. That's, you know, one process as All a judge, right. kind of keeping track of what you're like. Got I mean, it whittled down. One at a time, nice and easy, not too fast. From 31 dogs to this. <laughs> Her comment about not too fast is really important. It's not That's how right. fast they go, it's how well they go, how efficiently and how they represent the way their breed should move. All right, exactly. so you, guys, you guys have been judges mm -hmm. here. Help us out. This is a really good looking wow, group. The smooth collie. I, I'm really I'm excited. Very impressed that both, by both collies are in there. That's German awesome. Shepherd. Tony. Spectacular. Kent's just along for the ride, isn't he? Flying trot. Guhun. Hmm. The old That's English. Good. Gonna have to get to cut this in half here. <laughs> Shelty's not giving up easily. Nope, Look at him nope. go. That's beautiful. <laughs> Crowd loving it. Conrad. All right, Peggy. A lot of nice dogs out there. Just gonna take the last look. Looking at heads, head expression, ear set. Elsa. And Elsa. Take them around, please. I was just saying earlier, Elaine is a master breed of Bouviers. It's paying off here. That's right. That's right. All the that Bouvier breeding. is going to be one. Well done. Borders two, Shepherd three, and Old English four. Thank you very much. Wow. Baby Lars, that's champion Keisha's major league, mm -hmm. wins the herding group. Well done. And we're waiting for the high five. I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. love this camaraderie, though. In every single group we watch, everybody coming up to hug and kiss and congratulate. Everyone, every one of them would have liked to have won, but they're just as happy for the one who exactly. did. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. I mean, winning the breed is the win. Yes, absolutely. This is Huge. icing on the cake. And there is the fourth and final group of this night, the herding group winner. And to Carrot in the arena. Well, congratulations to you. The Bouvier has won the herding group. You beat out some very stiff competition, some very well-regarded dogs tonight. So how does this victory feel doing that? It feels wonderful. <laughs> and um, breeding this breed for a long time and um, being able to win the group at the Westminster Dog Show is great. Well, certainly it is a dog that is less common to people. So what do we need to know about a Bouvier if somebody at home was thinking of getting one for their family? They're a great family dog, and they're uh, like kind of a non-shedding breed, and um, they're wonderful companions. Great, wonderful companions, and they are winners. Congratulations, of course. We will see you tomorrow night. Jenny, back to you.